there's a lot of work that goes into figuring out how to take what a geologist can see from the different layers that they encounter in a hillside and turning it into a map that other people can use to understand the ground underneath. When we're out geologic mapping, we use a lot of different tools. First of all, we have to be safe. Carry our hard hat, first aid kit. We have a rock hammer. If we're going to take pictures, the scale can be very handy. We need a place to take our notes, and we might need a pick to clear away some of the soil to see the rock layers underneath or to, the, to look at the sediments that we find. Tape measure helps us measure the thickness of rock units, helps us measure distances, and this tool is a Brunton compass. The Brunton compass is a very useful tool for a geologist. You can use it as a basic compass to measure orientations. There's also a setting inside that you can measure the tilt of beds. And so if your rocks are at an angle or you're trying to figure out which direction a fracture is oriented, this tool can help you measure things in three dimensions. Sometimes like this one, a road cut will have different layers that you can spot. A geologist has to be able to understand the different rock layers and communicate the differences. And so, for example, in this, we have a siltstone layer here at the bottom that was part of an ancient river delta. Above the siltstone is a shale layer. It's very crumbly, disintegrates very easily. On top of the shale is an orange dolostone layer. On top of the orange dolostone layer is a gray limestone up here at the very top. So a geologist could turn this into a map with one, two, three, four different layers. This particular siltstone is essentially made up of very, very micro-sized particles of sand, quartz sand. And you can actually see these curved features in here that are what we call a trace fossil. It's the trace of a worm that was feeding in the mud when this was first deposited. And a shaley layer like this has a lot of clay-sized material in it, and it'll just crumble apart. Doesn't hold up well on a hillside, doesn't hold up well on a road cut, doesn't hold up well on your hand. The orange layer that's right underneath that limestone is called the Renfro member. Dolostone is essentially a limestone with some extra magnesium in it that gives it that, in this particular case, that brownish color. Here we can see a change between the two different types of limestone that we have in this layer. Down below, we have this kind of nodule, rubbly limestone here. It's part of the St. Louis member. And up above, it's more evenly bedded St. Genevieve limestone. Inside the St. Genevieve limestone, you can see little grains of calcite. Some of these are sand-sized and formed in the ancient ocean much like, in an environment a lot like what we find in the Bahamas today. 